Okay, hi. Uh, welcome to our watch party. Uh, this time, we are watching uh, 1998's The Mask of Zorro. Uh, I'm John Scott, and I have with me John Seiler. Uh, hola, senors and senoritas. I have Connor Irving. My house yeah. is powered by maple syrup. <laughs> and we have Luke Gonzalez, who's currently running back and forth between two computers because we had a hard time figuring this whole thing out. Yep, I'm over here. Somewhere. It's a real problem. It's it, If we only had a masked Avenger who was able to help us through our time of need. Yeah, especially if he was... Well, at least one of them in this movie is Caucasian. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, uh, two of them are Caucasian. Hold uh, on now. Most of them are, actually. Well, one of the Masked Avengers is Caucasian. Um, oh, then so, yes. Yeah, so since this is a longer movie, I want to hit play. Uh, if, John, you want to give me a countdown, and then we could kind of talk about stuff. All right, so we're starting in three, two, one. So, all right, we have the Paramount logo. TriStar. I think that's TriStar. I feel like I always say Paramount, and it's, it's never entirely Paramount. different company. Is that Zoro's horse? It's going over the mountain. Yeah. Isn't that a folk song? No, I'm gonna let you know right now. This is already gonna be my number one because I adore this movie to pieces. I am so excited we're watching yeah. it. There's gonna be a lot of um, who almost Wait, was cast in this and- movie. Amblin was the Oh yeah, Spielberg's a big producer on this. Yeah. Oh, this is like very uh Batman. Oh, well this is Yeah, this is true. 1998. So this is like this is at the end of the Yeah, it's like Batman Forever like opening. Yeah. It's also kind of James Bondy with like the yeah. directly walking on screen. Well, in the, you oh, know and also like in, 1821, Spain's 300-year domination of Mexico was about to come to an end. People's Rebellion, led by General Santa Ana, spread from the arid mountains of the south to the rich part of uh, northern excuse province. Me. Excuse me, it's Santa Claus. Gathered in the streets, calling for blood. The last <laughs> Spanish governor, Don Rafael Montenero, although under orders to return to Spain, Montenero refused to relinquish power with one final reckoning. All right. I think this is the first movie where we had, like, a whole thing in the beginning, right? Uh, like a reading thing, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was gonna be like naked ladies. Um, Revolution, I still, I guess, is just as fun. So, in case you did not know, one of the big things in this movie is that. Um, so originally, it was supposed to be cast. Um, when they were first making it, I think we talked about it was like Old Man Zorro, and they wanted um, what do you call it? Sean Connery. And okay. then the reason Antonio Banderas is in this is because this is right after Desperado. And um, Robert Rodriguez is supposed Robert to be. Robert Rodriguez was attached to direct it. He's the one who signed on Antonio Banderas, even though he left. Which would have been amazing because I would have loved to see a and Robert Rodriguez um, Zora movie. Though I won't lie, getting the director of Goldeneye wasn't a bad second choice either. No, um, and there's like a lot of like uh, Antonio Banderas does all most of his own stunts. Nice bald cap. The guy who trained Errol Flynn back in the day is who trained Antonio Banderas and his swordsman skills. Oh, that's cool. Oh, did we already talk about the director who ended up being the final director for this movie? No, we did not. Uh, uh, so he went on to direct after this uh, the reboot of James Bond, Casino Royale. Uh, did it, did that movie. Did it pause for you guys? Probably future watch party episode uh, did, yes. The Green Lantern. Oh. Uh. I'm sorry. I, I, just, like I, I, just, I, don't know, I don't know where it will fit in, but I assume there'll be a future watch thing at some point. Yeah, I just read a who was supposed to play Don Diego de la Vega and just cried in my soul because Raul Julia was cast but died oh, before. No. 
Oh, like, that would have been amazing. Could it's like anybody? Also, we might ever... be a couple minutes behind because it paused for us. There's like the dude on the horse. Yep, they're running through. Uh, what's your timestamp? Three minutes and 55 seconds. The most evil plot of all, real estate. The movie started back up, everyone. Here we go. It's kind of funny, because isn't that exactly... That's the plot. So I read the rest of the Django book, too. Um, yeah, you're the yeah, one of us, to think. That entire book is also about... Uh, what do you call it? Uh, property values? I'm going to break my computer. <laughs> Is it because you have two live streams going? Oh, do I? Yeah, your one computer still has the last live stream going. Oh, I did not know that. That is probably... Really tearing down my Wi Fi. That's fine. I will clean all this up in post. I love post production. I'm just still like kind of astounded that like we did not get Don Diego de la Vega, Raul Julia. Like, that's like Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man. Like that's like perfect casting. Like a Shakespearean actor who during Street Fighter rehearsed scenes in a robe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. I do have to say for a 1998 film making Anthony Hopkins look young with just some makeup and lots of really well shot angles to show it to not show it's a stunt double is working for me. It's like kind of like funny. Um, like very early on, I have like a real strong uh, Pirates of the Caribbean vibe from this. Like, well, the oh, same writers yeah. actually wrote this movie. Yeah, yeah. I think that's I. I this is yeah. I would say like a hundred percent. This is like those movies wouldn't exist with this because it's all the sword fighting. I think like also it's like adapting like a pulp like hero or pulp comics for like a modern day audience is and probably at the point like this is like the best like uh the most successful version of that. Yeah, and then the sequel. Have you guys seen the sequel? Not, uh, I think I've seen it once. It is nowhere near as good. Like, Dude, those have, kids like, a, just murdered the shit out of those people. Because like don't they have like Hell a yeah. baby, and there and there's like a it, it has like a real kind of like poochy kind of vibe to it. I don't even remember the plot of the second one. He's like it's ten years later, he has a son he doesn't connect with. His oh, wife kicks yeah. him out, and he gets, like, drunk, and I don't know, and he discovers a plot to something. Something. It's a whole thing. So, you give, like, a medallion to the one kid, uh, nothing to the other one? Yeah. He's just... I. Casting aside, he's so good in this movie. Like, there is just this real sense of just, like, fun the whole time, and it's gonna keep going. As oh, yeah. Not, like, before this, like, may, like in, like, the 70s or 80s, did he ever play, like, a pulp hero? Who, Anthony Hopkins? Yeah. No. No. I think this is, like, the first time I actively remember him being in, like, a fun movie. I don't know about that. He's been in like lots of goofy stuff. He's been in way more <laughs> since he got older. 
Hey, man, I think uh, S- Silence of the Lambs is pretty fun. Oh. Ah, so cool. Thank you. But yeah, no, he's done more goofy stuff as he's gotten older, but I think before this... Literally? Do you want to know what the movie was he did right before this? What? Amistad. (laughs) That is a not goofy movie. Yeah. Uh, Hell yeah, Priest punches the the guard. He played Van Helsing in the Dracula in the 92 one. Oh, that makes sense. This also probably came out the same year. Kind of. Actually, no, I've never seen that one. No, never mind. I've never That's seen that That's the Keanu Reeves one. Yeah, I haven't seen it. Yeah. You know, this also probably came out the same year, but this also reminds me a lot of The Mummy. Year before, actually. You're close. Oh, yeah. This is definitely like a Indiana Jones type feel in many ways, which is like kind of the best pulp movie ever made. Yes. I feel like. And having Spielberg attached uh, to it kind of helps. Which, which one? The first one, mm, I, I I think the third I don't know. One. I actually like all three of the original ones. Thank you for saying all three. Yeah, proto Batman. Oh well, like Batman is a straight up steal. Like he steals everything from Zoro, but I still think like, Zoro is one of the few pulp characters that Batman's done that to that still works in a modern day. Mm-hmm. What if what if the film that Robert Pattinson's Batman watches with his family before they're killed in crime? Is the Alley, Mask of Zorro? It's 1997's The Mask of Zorro. That would be kind of amazing. Wait, are you telling me that that the new Batman is a millennial? Uh, I I would I would think so. His horse is aimed toward Nick Tornado. It, it's hilariously like the Batcave through the fireplace. And this wig is awesome. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm looking through his like IMDb. The only other lighthearted thing I can see is um, a really terrible movie called Free Jack. Oh, I've heard about that one. But I he's the that... villain. Is that with Denzel? No, no. Free Jack is with uh, Emilio Estevez and Mick Jagger and Rene Russo. Oh, yes. Okay, yes. I have heard of that movie. Yeah, I've never seen Antonio Banderas so tan. <laughs> Do you mean um, <laughs> Anthony Hopkins? Is that what I said? No, you <laughs> said Antonio <laughs> Banderas. <laughs> I literally thought that was a joke. I genuinely thought that was a joke. I mean, it can still be. Let's just, let's, you know what? Just, just it's a, it's it a joke in my heart. Ah, look at that green screen. See, like, I still, I, I like, it. I like Anthony Hopkins as this character, even though it's like whitewashing. Raul Julia. Yeah, it's better than um, Sean Connery, who apparently turned down the role. Which, thank fucking god, I think that would have been horrendous. Sean would Connery you- just turns down roles. He just, I don't know, if he just doesn't understand them. He turned down this. He turned down Gandalf. He turned down the Matrix. He, the he Matrix. Turned down- he turned down Gandalf so you can be in uh, the League of oh, Extraordinary yeah. Gentlemen. God. Hey, man. Currently, some, you know, currently sometimes... the highest rated uh, video on the Fan of Zone YouTube channel. You know what? Sometimes people uh, have bad agents. And their agents get them into bad movies. Oh. Interesting. Sorry, I'm like looking through... Um, Catherine Zeta Jones's role was offered to Shakira. She must have been like twenty. Yeah, uh, Shakira must have been. Yeah, but that would have been cool by that point. I, yeah, it's the problem is like Catherine Zeta Jones is a great actress in pretty much everything I've seen her in. So like, I 
but it's not like she has a ton, ton to do in this movie. Oh, apparently Robert Rodriguez wanted Selma Hayek, which makes sense, but that would have probably been really bad. Yeah. Why well, I, I like Selma Hayek. I mean, no, I but I mean, like for them career-wise to be so attached. Oh. Uh, also, how I felt really bad for that woman having to kiss somebody thirty years older than her. I mean, <laughs> I like. I was just like, well, I assume the baby is Catherine Zeta Jones. And one of the ki- one of those teenagers was Antonio, like young Antonio Banderas. And I'm like, wait, so so Zoro is like like 15 years older than Catherine Zia Jones in this movie. Wait, I just blinked out. I was listening to the conversation of the movie. Wait, how? Yeah, because Zoro's how old were those kids? Like, uh, rather, I should have known. I didn't remember all this class stuff in this movie. How dare you, a rich man, fight um, for poor people? But it's, I guess it's always part of the character. Because that is all in the Django stuff. Yeah. Um, which I have to say, the book is really good. It the ending is so rushed. I which, like that was the worst part of it for me. Which I, which I mean, it's like going back to the Batman analog. It's that Batman is a rich billionaire who, like, you know, tries to fight against you know and corruption, the city, the corruption of of the city he loves. And Zoro is the yeah. rich guy who tries to use his wealth and power to protect the the country he loves. Yeah, I think Zoro is a little more Robin Hoody than that. Oh, I forgot that happened. Oh. Yeah, oh, I was trying to remember because he raises Catherine Zeta Jones as his daughter. I couldn't right. remember how that happened. That's right. I forgot that he killed. I've seen this movie so many times, but it's been 10 years. Well, you kind of did. Oops. Well, one of his idiot guardsmen did. I do think one of the things that helps in this is like having these. Where the fuck was he think he's going? <laughs> like he's just like, I'm just gonna walk away, <laughs> really fast. Um, I like how Shakespearean this feels, with having like these actors like Stuart Wilson and Anthony Hopkins do this. Oh, was that Stuart Wilson? Yeah, he's the the main villain. Well, you know who was supposed to play this character, right? No, I did not read that. Uh, Armand Asante? Oh. No, he would have been too big. I like him in a lot of stuff, but he's big. Like, he's... (laughs) Yeah, I'm looking through Stuart Wilson. Oh, and uh, Image Comics did an adaptation of this movie for comics. Yes, I did see that, but it's like a direct adaptation. Like it's oh, okay. the same. Like it's the same plot. What's weird is I remember this coming out the same year as the uh, the Man the Iron Mask adaptation, the one with DiCaprio. Oh wow, yeah. They I feel like these have very similar vibes. At least a very similar production design vibes. I think it's also like around that time of um what the Robin Hood movie with Kevin Costner. This was nine that was ninety one, this is ninety eight, so that was like seven years beforehand. Okay. But this was like the rise again of like the old swashbuckler, which kinda happened sporadically. There he is. He fucking looks great. Like, oh. like as much as we're gonna like swoon over Catherine Zeta Jones, this movie is just like all about Banderas. Banderas. Like, it's just like I 
Like, there's a reason why he came back to spoof this in Shrek 2. And he made, like, th- he made, like, a spinoff movie and a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, he made the sequel, too, but we can forgive him for that, because this movie's so much fun. Yeah, yeah. Get some exceptions. Okay, so do you guys remember the video game Gun? Yes. Sadly, yes. Uh, the guy who wrote that co came up with the story for this movie, or helped come yes. up with the story. That makes sense. Like, so is he like a bounty hunter? Yeah. I gotta see what other movies came out around this time. Because I actually feel like this is the kind of end of the revival of the westerns. Well, this was the same summer I remember as Godzilla. Oh boy. Like the Emmerich Godzilla. Let me see. Because yeah, you had this, you had Ever After, Blade was this, this year, Patch Adams, Thin Red Line. Blade, Blade was 99. Blade was 98. I have it right here. Small Soldiers was the same year. How much are we worth? I feel like the last time you got a movie like this was Pirates, like, 1. Yeah, that makes sense. Who played his brother? That's my question. Oh, this is no one important. Okay, doesn't really say who it is. Man, Antonio Banderas was like on such a fucking roar here. Because he does like Desperado. Then he does a movie that no one ever talks about that I kind of like, which is Assassins. Oh, I've heard that's a good movie. With Julianne Moore and Stallone, he's the villain of it, which is awesome. Um, That's where that meme comes from, where he's just like, (sighs) yeah. um, See this, and it was a couple years after Spy Kids, and I'm like, oh hey, it's the dad from Spy Kids. Oh wait, he's really good in this. Yeah. Then he does Evita, which also has Raul Julia, which is fucking awesome. Wait, so I, 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 I'm sorry, I I think I just missed all this. So they just like pulled a huge con. Yes. Okay. They're all in it together. Ah. Jesus Christ. Like, that's, ah, very, that's, that's hilarious. Very so hard. Yeah, but that's also very uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, too. Like, Yeah. Um, wow, I forgot how many good movies Antonio Banderas was in in the 90s. Because he goes from this to doing one of my favorite fucking movies, 13th Warrior. Oh no, it's a reverse flash. Um, no, not Jack. I like him. See, what's going to happen is that he's just going to use his uh, powers to get speed after them. Like, he's just going to make scary helicopter noises. Yeah, to me, this is like 13th Warriors, kind of like the end of him doing serious movies like this. I guess, like, quote unquote, like adult movies. Until, nah, he does Frida. But then it's like Spy Kids, Spy Kids 3D. Well, don't forget uh, Ballistic X versus Sever. Come I was going to say, well, uh, Ballistic X versus Sever kind of like, I think was like the end of him as like a and major. Once Upon a Time in Mexico. Kind of like, yeah, which is bad. Well, and he's done adult movies since. He's been in a bunch of. Um, but like, ooh, a, like really recently, like a, he's been in like, like great stuff. Star. Yeah, didn't he? What was the big movie he just did? Whoa! Um, he can't win. That's the Launcherman. Brutal. No, Pain and Glory. Pain, Pain and Glory. That was the one where people are like he's nom- He should be nominated for an Oscar. He was nominated for the Oscar. Yeah, it's like he he like went. He did like a bunch of little indie films, then got like a couple of huge films. 
Well, now he's back to doing huge films because his next few movies, he just was in the Doolittle remake, the one that just came out. He's oh, yeah. going to be in the Uncharted movie. I think he's the villain. Yes, and he's in the sequel to The Hitman's Bodyguard. And he's going to be the founder of Lamborghini. Yeah, it's like weird. He did like, he went like indie, big kind of, um, how would you say it? Like Oscar y, like kind of like not indie, but like kind of big movies like Evita. And then he goes into doing like stu- like a decade of studio movies and a lot of cartoons and stuff and Spy Kids. And now he's back to indie stuff. Yeah, now he's back to yeah the indie stuff. Because I do think he's kind of strangely like a underrated actor. Oh yeah, I think what he got like one... super typecast. Wait, so what they like one... they killed his brother, but just left like this big ass amulet behind? Yeah, but I don't think his brother anymore. killed himself. Yes, but he but took I mean, a sword like... to him. They like took a sword and they cut off his head and they were like, bury the body, take the head, but they like left this amulet behind. Have you, <laughs> yes, have you never seen this movie before? Like, I've seen this movie. Who else? I, uh, I, I mean, like, I've, yeah. I, I've seen this movie. I, 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 like, but it's been like 15 years. I haven't seen this yeah. movie in probably like 15 years. Yes. Yeah. I, I want somebody just to say, I am the bad guy. Who are you? I'm evil. <laughs> also, shout out to James Horner for this score, man. R.I.P. So apparently the guy who did the uh, sword fighting is the guy who did the sword training for Lord of the Rings, and he said, like, the best natural talent I worked with was Vendera's, like you said. Oh no, I think it froze again. Okay, it wasn't just me. Did it freeze for everyone else? No, because I'm watching it through my own thing. Okay. Yeah, I can't. Uh, Lou, you there? We might have lost Lou. Uh oh. I- I'm going to pause it then. All right. But okay, so you guys haven't seen this in like 15 years? Because I remember yeah. like I used to watch movies. Like when I liked the movie, I would watch it repeatedly as a kid, and this was one of those movies. Uh, It was not one of those. Rep- I think it's. I'm just I'm such a. Again, this is the. It's one of the reasons why I like the '99 Mummy is because I'm such a huge dork for like old school. Uh, I watched the Mummy way more than I watched this. But I like like movies that are like big, like swashbuckling, like kind of movies like this, where there's like a sense of adventure kind of the whole time. Um, I am gonna message Lou. Yeah, probably smart. This has been the most interesting watch party so far. Yeah, no, so far I love this movie. <laughs> so do I. I'm just talking about. I'm just also being sarcastic because I'm like, this has been the most interesting watch party because of all the great technical achievements we've achieved here. Uh, I think like that's why like in the future like uh, instead of like relying through like a feed, we should just like try and like pick movies that we'll be able to like. Either rent or, or you know, you know, stream there? from somewhere. Yes, my okay. computer decided to shut the bed, or my internet. Okay. I mean. Or what we could do, and maybe for next time we can obviously. Oh, f- the movie's back on, so we'll talk about it later. Uh. Zora gone though. I am Spartacus. Oh yeah, that's
I don't know if you guys noticed Anthony Hopkins is the guy with the blindfold. Oh, I did uh, not notice that. Wait, you're telling me the guy looks like Anthony Hopkins is Anthony Hopkins? Wow. Holy shit, he's Odin already. Well, he is an old man and a fool. That man is very How dead. he broke his neck, we'll never know, but it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, I was just like, he has no leverage. Oh, yeah, I thought it was like he like, crushed his trachea. I don't know why uh, he needs a horse when he can just, you know, speed right through the countryside. Mm -hmm. It is funny seeing him here so young, because his big thing was um, West Wing, right? Was West Wing on when this movie came out? Um, I don't know. I think it was after this. Let me see. Yeah, I think West Wing was definitely after this. Ooh, candy. Ooh, piece of candy. Oh, wait, it's, it's like a way it's gunpowder. <laughs> yeah, so this is three years after he did Prehysteria 3, which the movie dumpster guys... Covered. Uh, the movie about the tiny dinosaurs? The third one. The third movie about the tiny dinosaurs. Yes. Uh, yeah, West Wing's not for like almost another 10 years. Really? Yeah. He was in the Joey spinoff. Yes, that, that classic Joey spinoff that everyone loved so dearly. I also just appreciate, like, good old-fashioned sets. Yeah, practical sets. Oh, yeah. yeah, well, you can't do a movie like this without that. Plus, like, it's all, like, it takes place in California, so, like, why not? That looks like the exact same ship from The Goonies. So this is a One-Eyed Willie prequel? Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> Ah, uh, a rock. It's gold. It's gold! Gold in them hills. Joke. I'm trying to know what I know this other actor from. Like, he's been in a million things. What, the mayor? Yeah. The one that gave him the piece of gold. Um... Uh... He is from Mexico. I'm trying to see here. Let's see, he's in the Poltergeist, the Legacy. He did a bunch of voices for the Spawn cartoon. That's Stuart Wilson talking this is like, right. This is like a very like yes. Uh, he he has like a a really strong um. What's that character from uh, Blazing Saddles? Mel Brooks's character? Or Marty Feldman? Uh, the, the main bad guy in that movie, who's just like... So late. Marty Feldman, okay. That's, yeah, I know he's, like, you're I know, he's like, I know you all hate me. And everyone just looks miserable. Yeah. <laughs> 
I'm right here. I broke out. Psych. Yeah, because you had you accidentally shot his wife and you took his daughter. You dum dum. Wait, this is so weird. That other guy is also in Legend of Zoro as a different character. I think that's weird. Yeah, he's a different character, but he's also in that movie. I think what I know him from is he was in Stargate, the TV show. Oh, yeah, this is before California became part of... <laughs> oh, yeah, Zoro, forget that guy! Who were we just talking about? Oh, I know what I know him from. Uh, my wife used to watch Once Upon a Time. Oh, uh, by my wife, and he what? was G Geppetto. The old oh, guy. Oh, I've never seen the show. It's about to come to Disney Plus, I think, next month, so... It starts off interesting, gets real bad. Oh. Darn it. Like the entire cast leaves at one point. Like everyone. I heard it gets. It's like watch six seasons, skip the last seasons. Mm hmm. Because the entire cast leaves. Oh, Catherine Zeta Jones. Yeah. In case you guys didn't like two people listening, um, she's super white, even though she doesn't look it. She's. Actually, from the exact same place as Anthony Hopkins, she's Welsh. Well, it makes sense that she'd be the daughter of Zorro, then. Yeah, but yeah, I feel the same like, tan. Reading the Django <laughs> comment reminded me that, like, they are supposed to be Spaniards, so they would be white. Like, Spaniard Spaniards are white. Because you're thinking, like, depending on where they're from, they're basically the same ethnicity as French. They're from the same, like, depending on what part of the country. <laughs> you hawking my shit? <laughs> Oh, so the brother was the one who got it. Okay. Scary helicopter noises intensifies. It's like it's like a helicopter, but it's like a clop 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 clop. Yeah, it's just that whole like vibration noise he makes on the TV show. The I like the idea of like Anthony Hopkins' old man strength. I mean, for being in prison for like fifteen years, he. Was not doing at all. He, he did the uh, wait, he did the that? Iro effect where he just worked out in prison and got super buff. Wait, 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 did you say he was in prison for 15 years? Did they say that? No, he was in prison years. for 20 years. 20, 20 years. years. I was gonna say Kevin Zeta Jones is a baby. <laughs> no, he just puts another Z into his neck. Joke's on you. I'm trained to be depressed. Actually, looking like they're kind of him and Catherine Zeta Jones are kind of the right ages for their characters. Like the distance, he's nine years older than her. Who, Banderas or? Yeah, Banderas. Okay. Also, I didn't realize he's Spanish Spanish. Yeah. I thought he was like, Mex like a way of Mexico Spanish. But that's like the weird things, like, because. If you're from Spain, like depending on where what part, it's a huge country. Like you could be super white or dark, 
like I don't know if you've seen like Rafael Nadal's kind of like similar to Antonio Banderas, but then you look at the uh, like the two guys in the NBA that are brothers, the Gasol brothers, and they're pretty white, and they look fr- very French. But uh, oh, what was I gonna say? Oh, I appreciate Welcome that. Welcome to my back cave. Yeah, I appreciate that he's basically like the Liam Neeson. Apt comparison, but he's basically proto Liam Neeson from Batman Begins. Yeah. Except he's not going to poison the water supply with fear gas. My middle name is Robin. <laughs> God, no. <laughs> Stop it. How dare you? What a fucking way to end that trilogy. This cave is like fucking huge and awesome. It, I'm pretty sure this is a set and they built this and I appreciate 100%. that. It oh, is it is a, yeah, it is totally a set. <laughs> I appreciate this how like how excited Banderas gets here. Hey, he's fanboying out. Really one complication, but that's about it. Well, also, he's old as shit. Okay, so two complications. There's not, there's not that many. Yeah, that's why it's plural. Yeah, but he said there's too many. I'm like, there's two. There's not that many. Captain Love. I forgot that's his name. Yeah. I do love, like, the plot of this movie is very simple. It's like, the bad guy, it's literally the exact same thing as the Jingo book. It's like, the bad guy wants to take control of a state and not be a part of America. And that's his plan. That's to basically be the king of a state. Like, what would be a state? <laughs> I'm sorry, that was the best line in the movie. <laughs> the point again goes in. <laughs> There's some genuine good humor here. Well, again, I think Like Antonio Banderas can do a lot, and they no one's really. I feel like he like did like he did action like he's done this. He does funny stuff like the kid stuff, and then he did some like real serious roles. And I guess it's like finally, I guess it's this weird Hollywood thing where like certain maybe it's like for certain actors you kind of like are big until you're, like, 37, and then you disappear until you're, like, 60? Yeah, pretty much. Independent films from, like, Mexico, pretty much. Also, did you guys hear what they're going to be doing with Zorro, what the next two ideas for Zorro are going to be? I think you said one was, like, a future one, wasn't it? One is post-apocalyptic, yes. Ugh. The Such other a dumb one, idea. Sure. the other one is going to be a female-led Zorro reboot at CBS Amazing. TV Studios. Well, there's been many female Zorro books, so like I don't mind that at all. It's a female descendant of a warrior bloodline who will go great lengths to perfect the defenses in her community. It's set at NBC, so knowing NBC, they'll probably cancel it. Because I actually don't think that's a bad idea. But I no, think the I one think thing you lose. Idea. Yeah, depending on the time period, is that supposed to be current day? Which one? The the woman one is supposed to be current day. I think so. Yeah. I, I wonder how they deal with like the sword and gun play. I wonder if it's holy like, shit. I wonder if it's like ancient warriors who have to like they use swords, but there's I also guns. That good when I'm like sixty. I was gonna say like. He's totally is he not like really embodying that Don Diego de la Vega from the comic where he just has this open shirt and smoking a cigar and drinking yeah. some whiskey. also for all the ladies there's your uh, sexy sweaty banderas Man I can't wait to go with sexy Zoro this year for Halloween with the whip I love I I feel like I really miss training montages Like they're so much fun 
they don't do training montages for movies anymore, and it makes me sad. I think it became too cliche. Well, that's okay. It's supposed to be cliche. I know. Although, okay, to be fair, and I'm going to keep promoting this thing till the end of it, it's modern, but go watch Cobra Kai when it comes on Netflix this Friday. Just saying. Uh, yeah, Cobra Kai's good. They just released a small teaser for season three while announcing one and two are coming this Friday. This is very interesting. This is sexy. Antonio, what are you talking about? Antonio Banderas looks like a Rick Rude right now. Like 80s Rick Rude. <laughs> he does. Well, he has like a Jerry <laughs> curl. Like, it is a very long... Like, it's crazy, his hair. Okay. This is but cool. That, this is but that, that scene fighting. with like Anthony Hopkins like cutting his hair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the cockiness. I love it. I love his sideburns. <laughs> like, his entire facial hair thing, I'm I very jealous of. one thing he's got going on with the goatee and the mustache. Oh, the mustache and the soul patch? Yeah. Well, it's because this is the same thing as, uh... Ben there, or uh, Hopkins. Yeah. Yeah, let's steal a horse, kids. Black Beauty. Well, I think the idea is, like, it's an untamable horse, thus it's perfect for him. Yes. Although, can we do a thing in video games where we don't kill our horses anymore? Yes. Yeah, I can't that. do I mean, that anymore. Look, man, it's not my fault that I tried, that I pushed that horse too far, and it died while I tried getting it to run up that hill. No, I mean, like, story-wise. And it's not my fault. I just Siler, get like, that horse. I'm just imagining <laughs> Siler just, like, going behind the horse at the top of the hill and just pushing it from the back. Antonio Benzoro confirmed horse boy. <laughs> the horse whisperer. So, Equus... Is he Which get actually with also may have come out the same year. What did? Uh, the the horse whisperer. That's oh yeah. Name. Oh yeah! Holy shit! It did. Okay, wait a minute. Hang on, I want to see something. I love the way that they do his multiple masks and yeah. shit. Yeah. Like I love the full head scarf and that it's like designed. I really love the full headscarf with that mask, with that facial hair. Oh. oh. This is a hilarious chance meeting. Meet cute. She is like immediately like, ooh, danger. So just to say like some of the numbers is PG-13. It's was budget was $95 million. Uh, it opened at $22.5 million. Wait, I want to. Uh, I want to I wanna hear his his game. What Zoro's his game, game is? Bitch, I'm Zoro. Look at me, like do yeah, Zoro it's things. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, hey, it's like, hey, you want to see where the dress would be? Hmm. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, I love that cape. Oh, you'll, you'll like get that there. Cape with there, it's so unneeded, it's so necessary. Listen, uh, Zoro, the cape is always necessary. But uh. uh so this movie, do you, does anybody want to guess how much this movie made? I already know what it is, so I saw uh, it. Probably like about uh, like 280 million. Connor, do you want to venture <laughs> yeah, a guess? Sure, I'm going to do like 150 million. So it made 250, it made 94 domestic and 156 international. Oh, huh, goddamn. So I, I, I get... This movie did gangbusters. I remember this was the movie when I was five years old. Like I remember this being a big thing to talk about in the movie theaters. Yeah, so it did good. It like it doubled its budget, but it did amazing overseas, which kind of makes sense. It has like the biggest actors of all like of the era in this movie. I actually want to see what Catherine Zeta Jones was had done right before this. Uh was she in the haunting remake? Uh that or entrapment. 
before this, she did Titanic miniseries, The Phantom, which is another pulp movie. Oh. And then The Young Indiana Jones Chronicles in 93. Catherine the Great, a TV movie. She did a lot of TV movies. Oh, and Trapman and Haunting were after this. Yeah, uh, this is her... Phantom's like her first like big studio movie, but this is her first big hit. The, the Phantom's not a big studio movie. Uh, like, I'd, I'd argue it would be. How much money does the budget have to be to equal big studio movie? Um... Like, I don't think the Phantom was like meant to be like a big tentpole release. Okay, the Phantom was forty-five million. Oh, woof. budget! No, the budget was forty-five million. It grows seventeen. I just want to point out that Catherine Zeta Jones was in that animated Sinbad movie, which doesn't get nearly enough love, and is a fun ride. Just gonna throw that out there. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, it, it's not great, but like they like uh like um what's her name? Michelle Pfeiffer's character is like. Like one of the best animated characters of like that era, she's like her hair is like oh, just yeah, animated no, so gorgeous. well. That whole movie is animated well. I think it's a fun time. That's just me. Oh, I'm just looking what came out. It's open. Or like, what I don't was... want, like I don't want to sound gross or anything, but like she does this thing with her hands that's like really good. Like it, it's like one of those things where it's like she like taps and it's like she's like doing like, but it's like it, it's like interwoven. It's so. Good. But yeah, we're off. Oh, time. I know what you're talking about. Um, this is a fun scene where everyone's like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> He's just in the middle of all of us. Yeah, I remember this. I'm also looking to see what did come out the same weekend. Uh, what was coming out? It barely beat Lethal Weapon Four. It's opening weekend. Oh, this oh, is that a much better bad. movie. This movie does and that better. was its second week. It was pretty like so. Lethal Weapon's second week was twenty one mil twenty one point seven. Um, Armageddon was in its third week. Uh, there's something oh. about Mary came out the exact same week. Uh, yeah, that was a huge hit. And Small Soldiers was the same week. Or the yeah, week and, that was, and that was a massive bomb. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm reading this wrong. Yeah, the previous week, Lethal Weapon was one. Armageddon was two. Small Soldiers was three, and Doctor Doolittle was four. And something about Mary came out the same oh. week. Mulan came was out at this time and. Truman Show, the first X Files movie, and Saving Private Ryan was like the week after. Oh, was it really? Yes, that like probably killed this. Yeah, Saving Private Ryan made thirty million the next weekend, and then uh, the Parent Trap was the week after that. So that probably killed it over here. Holy crap, man! Like Lethal Weapon Four retention was still it was number three. Uh, yeah, man, the next it, was week. That, it was that Van Halen soundtrack. That was a joke. Yes, I, I, I know. know. We know. But there was like a Van Halen song yeah. for that movie, and it was awful. So yeah, it's like I think it being like having this is an awesome scene. I, I think Saving Private Ryan really stopped this movie from like being the massive hit of the summer. Oh yeah, isn't this like the Kurgan? No. No, it's the Mexican version. Private Ryan. I remember the Parent Trap was a pretty big movie that summer as well. Oh yeah, that was a huge kids movie. And then what else do you have? Uh, Ever After was also a big one. The Drew Barrymore movie. Oh yes. Um, then that August you had Halloween H two O. You had Air Bud two. You had oh, it was the same year as Basketball. I mean, I mean Air Bud two is not filled. <laughs> like it's not a big no. film. Blade was that month, the oh, next month. N- the oh. Negotiator came out. That is a f- very cool action movie that has I a very a bad while. star in it. I want to see it for a while, but it's yeah. hard now because it is very much a Kevin Spacey movie, okay, but it's, it's also very much a Samuel Jackson movie. This is funny. Oh. This is like great, like. Set pieces. <laughs> well, that's a statement. I love how he's he's very proto Jack Sparrow. He definitely is, and then he's just like, "Well, I'm about to die." <laughs> like, like, right? 
like as a comedic action star, like he I never thought of it, but like even that running away scene that's in like every single pirate yeah, movie. Yeah, crazy it's flying arms wailing. Yeah. Wow, I never thought how much they bit from this. And you said it's the same writer? Well, yeah, this was, came out in a very crowded summer. Yeah, I feel like 98's gotta be, like, a really good movie here. Like, I'm looking at the year. 98's pretty heavy hitter year. 98, I don't remember it being a heavy hitter year, because yeah. that was uh, Dr. Doolittle, like we said. Yeah, I'm looking. Titanic is number one. Wild. Armageddon, yeah. Saving Private Ryan, There's Something About Mary, The Waterboy. Well, Titanic was number one because that was a holdover from the year before. Oh, now we're uh, still doing gangbusters. That yeah. was 97. Um, so it was still out. Doctor uh, Waterboy, Dr. Doolittle, that would be the Eddie Murphy one. Oh, this is a hilarious scene. <laughs> what else came out? Rush Hour came out in 98. Oh. Yeah, D- um, Doctor Doolittle, Deep Impact, which is the that's the weird year where there's two different um, asteroid movies: Godzilla, Rush Hour, Goodwill Hunting, Lethal Weapon Four. Goodwill Hunting was '97 as well. Okay, so it's still a holdover. A Bugs Life, Truman Show, as good as it gets, which is really good. Mulan, uh, Mask of Zorro is 16 highest grossing movie of the year. Boo. Enemy of the State, which is a good Will Smith movie. Oh, that's a good Will Smith movie. Uh, oh, I forgot. This is the year where there's two asteroid movies and there's two animated insect movies because it's Bugs Life and Ants. Okay, Bugs Life was way better. Ants, yes. kind of. Ants, and- the movie starring the animated children's movie starring Woody Allen. Uh, that was also really depressing when you watched it. Uh, you have the Rugrats movie, X Files. Wait, so is she, like, just talking about, like, Zorro? Yes. Can you imagine like, someone taking like their kids the, to go like see the, this? And like, the this. certain look that only a father can give her daughter. <laughs> oh. Oh, we took it there, huh? Well, it was only a matter of time. I mean, it's like her her only interaction was like I like I I mean like if he it's like what is her history of Zoro other than just me None. seeing him. So it's like what's the stories of that she has known about Zoro? Uh, my thought is is because she's heard that Zoro's a horrible person because her adopted father um is, hates him and that's his enemy. So he's the forbidden fruit. I do think this is a fun way for like a second meet cute kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, and like helps build off that first one. Oh. I did not remember. I did not remember him being a love interest of hers. I didn't remember that either. It's, again, it's, it's been... I guess it makes sense because it's kind of it, the idea is that they're repeating history because he's the bad guy who's after her and he's Zoro who gets the girl and it's the repetition of it. Well, I mean, like, also he's like the stuffy white dude who's like who's like the second hand to like the to her father to her father. Like it's it's very much like 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 he is like archetype that is seen a lot of times. I have to say that this movie's pacing is amazing. We're only like just about an hour in. Yeah, well, I'm like looking man. like '98 had some like fucking banger movies. 
Nin- it has like the latter of the 90s, 98 and 99 were some pretty, pretty heavy hitters. There are some like horrific movies in here too. Like, um, but there's like, cause this is also the year of, uh, you got mail. That I remember being a huge Hope, movie. Hope floats. The, like American you said, the man, the, the man, American iron mask. Yeah. Um, American History X, The Truman Show, Rushmore, Rush Hour, Big Lebowski. Prince, yeah, Prince of I know Prince of Egypt. So. Okay, that was funny. I'm trying to say like there's Prince of Egypt, Star Trek Insurrection, which I think is a bad one. Uh, don't forget, uh, Phantoms came out in '98, and uh, as we all know, Affleck was Phantom. the boss in Phantoms, yo. Phantoms like a motherfucker. But yeah, there are also some bad ones. There's another <laughs> Star Kid. Shout out to Movie Dumpster. Uh, Meet Joe Black, one of the worst movies ever. Oh, I heard that was bad. Meet Joe Black is terrible. Also starring Anthony Hopkins. Oh, I didn't realize Deep Rising came out in that year. That's a good movie. Spice World came out in '98. Which oh. Star Trek so, is in, in? So did he like go out like without telling anyone? Yeah, I think that's why he's pissed. Then, uh, oh, Blues Brothers 2000 came out the same year as this. Like, a... let's let's just stop talking about bad '98 ni- movies. Oh, The Wedding Singer came out the same year as this movie. Jesus. Which movie is Insurrection? Star Trek. Yeah. The ninth one before Nemesis. But I don't remember it at It's the all. one where they go to the village that has no technology. I don't know if I've ever seen this one. Oh, don't. It's kind of boring. Is I this the one... Is, how many after the first contact is this? Two years later. Oh, so this is the next one. Yeah, yeah. I definitely didn't see it. Oh my god, is this 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 is the same year as the Avengers? <laughs> the, <Whoa>. uh, <laughs> you mean uh, Sean Connery's Teddy Bear Picnic? Oh my god. Yeah, what movie do you think Sean Connery turned down this for? I'll be so mad if this is what he turned it down for. Oh, let's see. What did Sean Connery do in nineteen ninety eight? It's it's fun. We could we could figure it out later. Oh, they're just like chit chatting, so Uh, that was it. He did Adventures and Playing by the Heart in 1998. But he did do a good movie after that with Catherine Zeta-Jones. He did Entrapment. 99. I've never seen. Entrapment uh, is good. Entrapment is probably more remembered for Catherine Zeta-Jones oh, than yeah. anything else. Yes. It's the sexy laser scene that's been st- done a billion times over. Where she's in like a cat suit and <laughs> I like that he's smoking little cigars. This is my like, my my biggest thing. I like I have a love hate with these like good movies. Is I see people smoking cigars and drinking, and that's all I want to do. I I hope there's like a moment like where he's like he's like, what are you talking about? I got lots to try. I'm like, in matter of fact, I was like, <laughs> they, I was like talking to this hot young thing this morning, and it's like they like start talking about like you know him hating on this girl. I honestly think that happens. Because I, oh, like, I feel like, I feel like he like says something. He's like, "Any girl, but that girl," something like that. And he's like, "What are you talking about?" And he's like, "Remember those complications?" Oh, I was thinking of like just like Twenty Two Jump Street, or um, like where he ends yeah. up like having sex with the girl, and he like high fives her, and he finds out the girl is his daughter. Oh, oh wow! Wait, he looks that great. was the funniest scene in the whole movie. Oh, this is the best costume of the movie. <laughs> It's straight pimp. Like, why is he touching his mustache? Because it's thin, and he doesn't like it. Probably. 
I want to take a picture of it and like show it to my wife and be like, would I, could I pull off this mustache? Oh, Antonio Banderas is very thin. So like, that conversation is in a different start, way than I was expecting. Start with yeah. the mustache and then go with the hat. And then we're like, well, about the scarf. Now about the blazer. See, I don't think, I think the hat would be the hardest part. I think I could do the blazer first and the scarf second. Lou, would your wife get turned on if you entered in the bedroom with this outfit on? She would be like, it's a lot of layers to go through. <laughs> <laughs> well, I also do love uh, Anthony Hopkins, like, with this weird, like, he's in a suit with a ponytail, and it's like a, a velvet jacket? Brown jacket? Yeah, I mean, like, oh. he looks good, too. Damn, the bad guy rocking the, like, royal purple velvet. Oh, that's like cross purple velvet right there. That is nice. I mean, he is. He stole that from Prince. Yo, that um, that orange ascot though. I feel like all the fashion in this you could wear today because you would just be seen as like the Omega level hipster. I'm sorry. This is like the moment where it's like this. Antonio Banderas is like one of the smoothest bastards. I've ever oh, seen. you can see it. Like Catherine Zeta Jones, and she's acting the shit out of just her eyes of like, I want to fuck that guy. If they cut back to her again, you'll see it. But yeah, Antonio Banderas is. Was he ever voted sexiest man alive? I Probably. Antonio Banderas? I feel like he has to have been, right? If not, it was definitely in the issue. Hang on, I'm looking. I'm pretty sure that Antonio was on. I would just imagine if, like, Anthony Hopkins was, like, just snapped right there and ruined the whole thing. <laughs> I do think they're all doing, like, great, like, he, I feel like you can see it in the background where he's like, the fuck? I love how he's, like, holding his head down. Like, that would hide. Like, he's doing a very Clark Kent of being old and schlumpy. Also, um... Shout out to Antonio Banderas, because I know he just got uh, COVID, and I hope he's doing okay. Oh, yeah, I heard about that, yeah. And he's, like, 60 at least? He just turned, on his 60th birthday, he got it. Yeah, that's He's as old as Anthony Hopkins is in this movie. And looks infinitely better. I guess that's the help of, like, TRT. And uh, I mean, like, I don't know, man. We, we've talked about for a little bit tonight, like, how good Antonio Bandera, or not, Anthony Hopkins looks in this movie. He does, but like, he's nowhere near the shape that Antonio Banderas is in right now. But I also think that's, like, better diets and all that stuff and affording trainers and also giving a fuck about all that stuff. <laughs> he's like the fuck like, get away, get away from like, my daughter <laughs> he's like this motherfucker <laughs> I gave him too much term <laughs> I feel like oh um, there's like one abridged thing I watch and they're like oh ro-, like they actually like talk about like rolling for stuff it's like oh god damn Anthony Hopkins roll or, or uh, Antonio Banderas rolls like a nat <laughs> a nat 20 or whatever for uh Charm. <laughs> Wreck. Oh, you just owned them. Yeah.
<laughs> All right. <laughs> that was funny. Zeds. They are having sex with their eyes and their voices, and no one can tell me otherwise. Wow, I just... I'm sorry, I, I'm looking through People's Sexiest Man of the Year. I don't think he was named it. Several people are named twice. But, like, the most uh, surprising uh, one, you will never guess the name. 1992 Sexiest Man of the Year, Nick Nolte. Oh. <laughs> What did he do to get? Did he just growl his way through the awards? It's like arr, 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 arr. I feel like my impression of him is just that scene in like uh, the Hulk. Oh God! Did you guys ever watch that movie? Oh, I've seen it a bunch of times. Okay, I didn't know the one. No, yeah. Oh, it's so bad. It's, it's interest. There are things in it that are interesting. I feel like we're watching somebody literally charm the pants off a woman. Ooh, that was a good death stare from Kathleen Zeta Jones. Uh, it's like, she's also like, this motherfucker. It's like. I just, every time I see Antonio Banderas, I just think of that, uh, the opening to drop it like it's hot, like the. Boom, boom. When did she marry what's his name? Oh, that's fucking creepy. So the bad guy has a portrait of Zor- of Anthony Hopkins' dead wife. Uh yeah, because uh I assume like he also like fed the lie that uh, yeah, Zeta Jones said that you know that you know that was his wife. Wow! So two years after this came out, she married Michael Douglas. Oh yeah. Oh. They're like still married. Yeah, they have two kids. I think they like separate. They like separate for a brief time, and then they came back together. Well, I think that's because he said eating. <laughs> Eating <laughs> girls out gave him throat cancer. <laughs> <laughs> also, isn't she? I think she's bipolar. I think she came out and talked about that at some point. Mr. Steal Your Girl. Oh, I just said that too. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, Catherine Zeta Jones is bipolar 2 disorder. Oh, okay. I-, I feel like she was like one of the first big celebrities to talk about like mental health stuff. Because I believe that was like, like all the like rags were going after like their marriage. And it's like, yeah, I deal with like, I'm sometimes crazy because I have mental health issues. I also married someone that could be my dad. <laughs> the more I watch this, the more I'm like, wow, that comic book really nailed like the idea of Zoro being this like his mask is being this like very frilly aristocrat. It's it's like okay. really funny because it's like Hang on, this is super know, like, hot, I just wanna say. <laughs> to, bring, to bring up like the analog of Batman, it's like Batman and the re- like, you know, the reason why we bring up Batman is like the idea that Bruce and his parents were watching Zorro the night that his family was killed. So it's like yeah. very much he like kind of models his oh. life after, you know, the heroes of Zorro and the Great Ghost. And it's like kind of like funny because like Batman's like a guy who like there is no Bruce Wayne. You know, it's just Batman. No, it's all Batman. But, I, I that's how I read it too. But like Zorro is like also Alejandro. Like yes. and Alejandro is the person outside of just being Zorro. And I think that's like I don't know. It's like kind of an interesting thing that like 
maybe not a whole lot of writers in Batman have kind of like really it's, done like it's more complicated because like I actually think there's almost like there's two masks. So he wears Zorro, and then there's like the fake Alejandro, and then there's the real Alejandro, which is kind of like another person. Oh, he pissed off fake daddy. <laughs> also, like, I do kind of like the idea that Bender, like, he's so tiny. Like, having a hero be this short is, like, and in the shots this short is interesting. Because he's, like, a lot smaller than um, Raphael. Oh, damn, this guy must be goddamn huge. Antonio Banderas is 5'9". I didn't lose you guys again, did I? No, I'm no. here. No, every, everyone's just, like, so gross in the film. You called yeah. it last week. Yeah, like, it's fucking good movie. <laughs> like, I said last week, this is going to be a number one, and I'm sticking to it right now. This is, like, I think one of I, my favorite movies. I honestly time. might watch this tomorrow. <laughs> is this, yeah. like, going to be, like, is this going to be, like, the moment, like, in Wild Wild West, where he's, like, and now here's all of California, we'll be ours, but we've but it'll be broken up between like yes, all of our will. different lands. Oh yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> and I will rule it all with my giant spider. Oh it's also yeah, there's the same scene spider. in Superman John Returns. Peters. John Peters, calm down. Uh, I do yeah. like how the one guy is like, "Uh, the fuck you doing, guy?" Guys, kind of a look. Guys, the most evil villain of all, real estate. Yeah, it's literally the plot of Superman Returns. <laughs> and they do but, the same stupid thing with the map. But here's the thing. This movie did it better. Oh, well, yeah, of course. Oh man, it's a gold rock. <laughs> I was trying, I was looking up to see like, oh, what was going on in the country, like in the US at this time? So like the president's James Monroe. I don't really know much about what was happening at this time period as like a history person. Uh probably Spanish American War is what they're talking about. Yes, I believe so. Yeah, this is like eighteen hundreds, right? Eighteen twenty one. Okay, so that, I believe. Was like, that wasn't the Civil War. Uh, oh, no, wait, that's the beginning, so it's 1831? Yeah, it's 1831. No, it's 1841, because it's 20 years later. 20 years, yeah, you're right. So that would be... This is where they make the giant spider. Oh, interesting. It's the first year which the United States has three presidents. Uh, Martin Van Buren, William Henry Hendry Harrison, and John Tyler, because I think Harrison died in office. Oh, man, those are a lot of gold rocks. 
Oh yeah, this sure, is the okay. uh, history fact for history nerds. Uh, the president that was elected died, I believe, because he caught pneumonia during his really long acceptance speech. And he yeah, died thirty one days into his into his term. So he was president for a month. Yeah, because anybody who's a hoe is a pussy. Oh, and speaking of Anthony Hopkins, eighteen forty one, uh Amistad. Oh wow, yeah. And eighteen forty two is the year that how old some stuff is born. I'm looking like Edgar Allan Poe wrote mur- the murders in Rue Morgue. Can you imagine the giant spider popped out of that explosion? So I definitely think that Captain Love is just reverse flash and he's altering history. He's trying to make this go the way he's not supposed to. Oh. Wow, this is... I'm sorry, like, I'm, I forgot how, like, kind of... Like... Like not maybe like like a social take. This is again. Oh, that was the guy that got shot in the beginning. Wasn't it? That was the guy. You're right. Yeah, I think that's why I'm telling Benares is like, oh shit, what's happening? Oh, his feet. Oh my god. I'm... He is legendary. I must say, everyone needs to get a toothbrush. Just saying. This is a, this is an interesting like soliloquy to give this guy. <laughs> also, very pirates of the cool. Caribbean. What a I cool too want to go out also, and jump. Guns, guns don't work like that. He would like a, that's not how physics work. He would have still continued. Cool, what a cool way to die. <laughs> Pecker would. What a cool way to go. I'm just saying. Oh, and Antonio is just like, oh shit, that was my friend. Shit, he's still alive? Wow, that was one of the best movie deaths I've seen. Like, he actually yeah, played that pretty good. And that was a pretty impactful scene, too. Yeah, like, that's what was... Like... This movie does a really good job of, like, info dumping and, like... Because that character just info dumped a shit ton of stuff in his... But having not the main characters do it and do it in a way that's interesting... The director got like really good like face acting in this movie. Don't make me put my hand through your chest. I love his hair in this movie. I'm just saying. I don't know. If- oh, it's good. Oh. Oh, I forgot about this scene. Oh, this scene is hilarious. Was that the name of the character in Django? 
the Jingo book? Yeah, that was his uh, uh, assistant. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> Anthony Hopkins could be like, listen, <laughs> don't date him. <laughs> But he's also like, I'm talking to my daughter, who I haven't seen since she was an infant. He just goes, bullshit. I'm just waiting for Anthony Hopkins to just snap and be like, that's bullshit. Oh, I'm looking at like some of the stuff. So Armando Sante didn't do the movie because he was doing the Odyssey, which is the best thing Armando Sante has ever done. Oh, really? It's a made-for-TV miniseries that covers the uh iliad and the odyssey and he plays uh odysseus and it's really really good um do you want to know the saddest thing i remember about the odyssey my only memory of the odyssey is watching the wishbone version if y'all remember wishbone oh wishbone's the shit thank you on wishbone i love wishbone why would i shit on wishbone they're apparently rebooting wishbone into a new movie i don't know how to feel about Uh, it that makes me sad. That dog is definitely that dead. Make me... <laughs> uh, oh, Jesus. You say I... that dog like they didn't have multiple phones. <laughs> I know. And they, and they are all dead. So, okay. <laughs> they are all dead. That okay. army of wishbones right, is dead. Right here. It says, Universal Pictures and Mattel are developing a film adaptation, and Peter Farrelly of the Farrelly Brothers will produce the film. Can, you mean Academy so, Award winning uh, director of the Green Book? Ugh. Uh, Wait, what was up. the other movie that he did besides Green Book? Uh, him um, and his brother did a bunch of like, raunchy com- there, comedies. There's, in, there's in something the about Mary. There's something about Mary, me, myself, and Irene, Dumb and Dumber. Because the Green Book is supposed to be based on his dad, right? <laughs> who no, knows, that Mary? is the writer. Oh, that's who I'm thinking of. Um, I'm looking at the Odyssey, like IMDb. It's like, oh, I, f- I knew it. I remembered Eric Roberts was in it. I did not remember Christopher Lee and Vanessa Williams are in it. Also, now I want to watch Wishbone. Oh, Show you ready for kid. the big reveal? Mmm, <laughs> head tea. Well, that was a big. There was like a big thing about putting body parts into whiskey and stuff. And to take a shot of it. Mmm, handy. What a dick. That's handy. How dare you, Connor? No. Hand right through the chest. I'm just gonna keep making reverse flash jokes. That's all I can do. His hand or the one in the jar? Actually, use uh, the hand in the jar to make it funnier. You can vibe right through it, make it go all vibrating. I do like this. Is a really good scene where it's like, I think you're the guy. Oh. Oh, 
oh, I just remembered the scene of like how he gets it and fucking awesome from that line. Do you do any of you guys remember? Yeah. No, don't. Spoil I'm not going to spoil it, but like I just remembered because that line triggered a memory. That scene would is. You, <laughs> would you rather drink whiskey made f- with someone's human head inside of it, or uh, a sip of grandma's peach tea? Oh, that's an excellent question that I hate. <laughs> I think I'd rather take the whiskey because at least it's like, do I know where the grandma's tea came They're from? They're both sterile. You yeah, know what I mean? Let's do or- I think I'd rather take the whiskey because at least it could get me drunk. So it's brother whiskey or scientist pee. But like, you can actually take whiskey that has like people's toes or fingers in it. It's like yeah, a real thing. Like a whole bar God, I, okay, would you rather drink whiskey that had a human toe in it or a human finger in it? Ooh, which toe? Uh, I. I to me it doesn't really matter because I I think it's a finger because I don't know where that toe has been. You don't know where that finger's been. Yeah, Fingers can I be in more places than toes. Exactly, toes are in your socks all day too. Yeah, but what if it was like that that guy who got shot earlier and it's a dirty, crusty feet toe? And I'm well, not even that? joking. Like that is a real thing that exists. Well, I I mean, like I know that there's like insects there and like alcohol. Yeah, I, I think it's is it Also, uh there was a human head in that jar in this movie's PG thirteen. Yeah. There was no blood. Also, I don't think you can preserve a human head in water. I no. know why they said it was water. No, you can't. That that head is decaying. Wait, you're telling me that was fake? Have I Do you want to see a picture of a human toe in whiskey? Not particularly, but shoot, yeah. Also, yeah man, like, are we seeing a dead body after this? <laughs> so we're all gonna find. It. I guess we're going to Canada and see. If there's a can- dead body up in Canada. Uh, yeah, there's probably a bunch. Also, really Lou, I, I was looking up stuff about um, Wishbone and the guy who voiced him, and apparently he works for Funimation and did a bunch of anime stuff. Oh my god, I'll have to look it up. Oh, and guess where this uh, toe whiskey is. I'm going to say the Yukon. Yes, it yeah, is. I, I know the bar you're talking about. Yeah, it's in Dawson City. <laughs> and it, the bar has a toe master. Oh, he shaved his stash. No, he pulled it off. Oh, was was my mind. Yeah, right? Yeah, I missed that part. Oh, that makes me sad. That stash is so key. But I guess it makes sense, because then if you're a Zorro and you don't have any facial hair, and then you're... Dot. Well, which wouldn't you do it the other way? Wouldn't you have the fake hair with the mask? Yeah, I would do that. He's ready. He's like, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to make some whiskey with feet. What a cool ass motherfucker, you know. Presentation is key. I remember that name for the trailer. I remember that line, at least. (laughs) 
Hmm, classic villain shit. It's interesting. I, I love when the second bat, like the second, is like even more evil than the first guy. I love how the, se- the second guy is like, I just want to gosh darn kill people. Now, is he supposed? He's supposed to be a member of the American army, right? I believe so. He's like, I just want to make more whiskey, and I need more heads. It's the, just that simple. Look at that chest hair. Did I? How did I? How did he notice him? What did I miss? No, he was like looking at some like uh, paper. He realized the map was gone. And then he realized that Zoro was here. He said guards, and he turned around, and Zoro was like, "Surprise! I'm here." So. Uh, Harrison Love is a real person. Oh shit! Is, really? I, is, is he, he an asshole? asshole? Uh, he was California's first statewide law enforcement. He was the head of California's first statewide law enforcement agency. So I guess it's like the Texas Rangers, but for California. Yeah, this oh, yeah they're called the California sure. Rangers. And he was famous for killing the notorious bandit, bandit Joaquin Moretta, which I believe is what they based Banderas' character after. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, because he's Alejandro Moretta, and he's based on the real life uh, Joaquin Moretta. So that's well, the well, Joaquin Moretta his was his brother. Wait, yeah. sir, are you are you telling me that this cop is a bastard? Hold on. And he was called TCAB the Robin Hood of the West. Doesn't have a ring like that, you know. TCAB, TCAB. Yeah. This cop's a bastard. All right, now you're just like getting angry for no reason. That was a good fight scene. They're all great fight scenes. Oh, I just think like swordplay is so good cinematically, especially here. Like the shots are like awesome. Okay, this is cool. Yeah, this rules. This is again like. Also, the music is fucking awesome right now. Like, this is this music is very Indiana Jones to me, but like with a Spanish flair. It's uh, James Horner did the music. Guy did the score for Titanic. Oh, he's like a legendary composer. Passed away a couple years ago, sadly. Unexpectedly, too. Well, his work is much appreciated because it really this elevates. like a really cool table fight. Yeah. yeah, his plane actually crashed. His private plane crashed in a. Wait, the, don't they do uh, a table fight in Pirates of the Caribbean? They do. Oh, I like the gymnastics. It's better than uh, Jurassic Park Two. <laughs> it's not hard. Yeah, that's what. Actually, that's what this movie needs. He needs to be fighting some raptors. I was going to say dinosaurs would make this experience a whole lot better. So the guy who did the score for this did the score for Lamp Before Time, The Rocketeer, Page Master, Jumanji, Casper, The Grinch with Jim Carrey, Braveheart, Apollo 13, Titanic, among others. Oh, I'm looking at his, like, starting at the beginning. Like, he did, oh, like, an early on... He did Wrath of Khan, 48 Hours, Crawl. Commando. Search of oh, Search for yeah, Spock. This guy's a legend. Cocoon. Um, yeah, Commando. Battle Beyond, the, Battle Beyond the Stars, which is a great B movie. Uh, he's uncredited conductor for Aliens. Now we get Ooh. the best force. Now we get the best Batteries source fight in the whole movie. So, yeah, there is a whole IMDb fact about how they did this scene. (laughs) 
see they're having sex with the swords now. Um, in the IMDb oh, yeah. thing, it said that Catherine Zeta-Jones in interview just said that she was actually very turned on during the scene <laughs> of filming it. I'm glad that we all know that because we could tell. Uh, guys, it's just like sex because the pointy end is penetration. Yes, thank you for yes. bringing it all the, the way scene around. that we yeah, will get, the shot we will get to they they did it with wires attached to her. Well, I guess not attached to her. I like her big smile. Yeah, it's like good. I actually like watching this. I'm like, she could have played like a pretty good Catwoman. Like, I feel like she has like a good vibe for that. And I feel like this is a very Batman v Catwoman scene, except the roles it, are kind it of very much is. Like it's sexy fighting. This is very sexy. This this is might so be the sexiest movie we ever do. Yeah. Yeah, to date. Yeah, this is definitely going to be the sexiest movie. I mean, we did cats, and that is also like ridiculous. Okay. Oh, that whole milk nope. scene. That's, yeah, that's like that's sexy and all that's the, the horniest. Ways. That's the horniest it's scene. We'll really ever have. horny. We have yet to f- see a movie either. hornier. I don't know. This is just sexy. I also kind of like the idea, although it's definitely not him, of like him. Oh uh, yeah, doing fight. gymnastics. Although it's like he did a lot of his own stunts. I don't know why, but I love the uh, like, the wind cutting sounds. Yeah, the like clicking his Flourish. tongue. Oh this, yeah, this the... the best part right here. It's the funniest part anyway. Oh, I this... remember this. Yeah, there's a whole, oh, the whole IMDb God. thing is that they figured this out by attaching wire system to her outfit. So, like, as you can see, like, it obviously gets pulled down. It, it's classic Western, though. Yeah. I feel like this movie is everything Wild Wild West wishes it could be. I, f- I feel <laughs> like, I was like, I don't remember the scene he's talking about. And then, like, five seconds beforehand, I was like, remember, like, young John Seiler watching this movie. I'm like, oh, I remember this now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, the sexiest sword fight in the history of cinema. Yeah. Ooh. Again, and the score is awesome, as I say. The comedy in this is also really well done. Fuck that hat's baller shit. The hat's like, pimp. What a baller move. <laughs> like how he's just like he comes in his daughter is half naked. He's like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> he's vigorous. He's very vigorous. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I do it again. Yeah. She is fucking phenomenal in this movie so far. Like they all are. Every actor. Every is. yeah. It is. This is also the most fun. Oh, that is very stagey outdoors, but it's still fun. Again, there was a reason why I called at the beginning. This is going to be my number one because, and it's going to be very hard to top it going forward. Can you imagine, like, a Zorro video game? Oh, it would be Assassin's Creed, except in Mexico. It, yeah, or, like, Red Dead, but just all Mexico. I I was gonna say, I remember the horse fucking him up again. <laughs> I actually horse, really like that bit. The horse just screws with him, it's the funniest part. I feel like this has... It's a serious take on... Um, Princess Bride kind of stuff. Like, I get a lot of Princess vibe, except way bigger budget, obviously, and 
are we calling this sexy princess bride? Is that what we're saying? Maybe. Like, I feel like it has the giant, which Princess Bride also has. I love how they're chasing a horse that has no rider. He's just like, hi. I am. It's kind of like the Battle of Endor right now. <laughs> this is also, like, awesome and it, insane stunt work by this stunt person. Are we sure it's not Banderas himself? I just horse work. There's no, that fucking flip he just did. That guy did that on a horse. Uh, this movie's so fucking good. I fucking love this movie <laughs> so much. Like, if anyone's like, oh, "I love Pirates of the Caribbean," I'm gonna be like, "Shut the fuck up. Go watch Mask of Zorro." Yeah, really. And like. Everyone is having fun, too. Like, he's riding two horses. Like, one foot on each. He's JCVDing it with, like, a split. <laughs> he, and he, he just teabagged that dude. <laughs> 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 like, this is a very funny comedy fight scene, like, chase horse scene, isn't it? <laughs> I'm, I'm having a ball with this movie. Oh. That's and again, someone did that. Like that was a practical stunt. I feel like Siler and Connor are just gonna be like, "Oh God, here are these guys again, just gushing over and over about this movie." Go nuts, man! I'm just—I keep forgetting that we're doing this, and I'm—I'm I'm just watching the movie. Yeah, I think this is one of the harder cases of us doing a commentary track for this because it's such a good movie. Because, like, at least with Hellboy, I hated it enough that I could talk endlessly about how much I hate it. I actually don't remember anything that happened in Hellboy. That's I'm so jealous. See, I feel like I'm that way with Artemis Fowl, because that was such a... Just what a bad like, movie. How like, could you forget Josh Gad blowing sand out of his no, ass? No, that's, like, the only thing I remember. I re also remember that they never leave the house. I, and I was I like, are they, they never going to leave this fucking house? And guess what they do? Let me tell you about Artemis Fowl and how he's the biggest villain in the world, except for he doesn't do anything villainous, I guess. Well, I guess I could say, spoiling really quickly, what we're going to do next week, because next week I feel like there's more to talk about. What are we doing again? The Lone Rocketeer? Ranger. I think Lone, Lone Ranger. Ranger. It, I actually oh. think it's kind of a perfect movie, because we can see, like, all these stunts are practical here, and I bet none of them are practical in Lone Ranger. Yeah. Uh, I would. I think I remember seeing it. And like Gore Vinsky is like a guy who likes the practical. I mean, Gore Vinsky also did the first Pirates movie. He did the first yeah, three Pirates he, movies. Yeah, the first three. But there, there's Lone Ranger has problems, but there's enough there where I enjoy it. And the last twenty minutes is amazing. I have I never like, seen it, and I'm excited to do. That's the first movie I've never seen. That we're I like. Doing. I remember like in the chase scene, at least. I also like this bit. Like, it's an interesting, like his reveal that like she's his daughter. And like, oh, so you like fucked me over, and like I have to produce this little prancy dance in front of my brother's killer while he has this fucking head in a jar. Like you can feel the emotion. It's really cool. Yeah. It's really good. I think that's. It's also. It's like you have this like a Pirates of the Caribbean type movie, but having Anthony Hopkins and Antonio Banderas like at the top of their game, and Catherine Zeta Jones like. It lifts this movie up so fucking much. Because I do think, like, Johnny Depp, whatever he is as a person, like, he has been a good actor in movies. I don't, like, he's doing what he's doing in Pirates, and I think that's why the, in the okay, first three... So I, I'll warn you right now, Lone Ranger is Johnny Depp doing his Jack, Jack Sparrow thing, but he's a Native American, quote-unquote. Yeah, I know, we're gonna have to deal with all that. Um... But, like, what's his name playing 
because I think the best character in the Pirates movie, especially that original trilogy, is um, Davy Jones. Yes. And, like, he is by far, like, until he, like, when he's on screen, it's like, oh, we have an actor-actor in this movie who knows how to fucking act through CGI. Oh, this is so cool. Surprise! I also think the makeup department does a great job because, like, they tanned up Anthony Hopkins and mascaraed him up, but, like, it looks fucking good. Like, everyone here is acting. Stuart Wilson. Yeah, this is probably the best thing he's ever done. What else was he in? He's in a lot of, like, random shit. His top four movies are Hot Fuzz, Lethal Weapon 3. Hold on, who uh, the hell was he in Hot Fuzz? Dr. Robin Hatcher. And he's in the worst TMNT movie that we're going to do. Oh, is he really? Yeah, I think he's the villain. Oh, no. I think he's the white villain. Oh, God. I hate the fact we're doing that movie. But we can't not. I mean... And, like, I have a personal connection. I saw that movie before it came out in theaters. Like, I had, like, a weird personal story. Yeah, you have a weird story we need to save for that. (laughs) Yeah. Even Anthony Hopkins' face is just like, no. I love that his Uh, whole plans have been undone just by one random woman in the street. But, like, I also love that, like, in that shot, like, he, in order to prevent what happened before, throws himself at his own man. Because, like, even the bad guys, like, no, like, don't kill it. Because he has raised her for 20 years. Also, like, weirdly good of Hollywood to probably age up the character from what she would be. Because I feel like at 20 years old, she'd be kind of an old maid at this time period still. Yes, I think so. For, like, aristocrat people. Are are you saying that we should have had 25-year, like, 35-year-old Zorro, like, having, like, romance and like 15 year old um, like I'm telling you like, reading the Django book they do the ages correctly and it's gross but it's historically more accurate and effective and gross for that reason and again that Django book is that Django Zora book is really good it just ends very quickly shit they chucked that fucking guy down the stairs I'm trying to think if I've seen a movie where, like, I've noticed such good stunt work before. John Wick? Yeah, I guess that's, like, a modern one, but I guess it's a little different, like, with the horses is, like, another thing. But yeah, John Wick, I still have to see, I've only seen the first one. 
Oh, it gets so there's, much better. There's just there's so much like content to watch. I think I have three episodes of Lucifer left of this part one of season five. And it's so goddamn good. Like, do you like a really good um, meta episode? I think it's episode four or five is like a meta episode. Damn, we're moving quick through this movie. The pace of this is amazing. Oh, it, it's nonstop, which is like awesome. We're at uh, hour, uh, like an hour two. fifty-two. Yeah, we still have twenty minutes left. Because basically, all we have left is the big action sequence and then the like epilogue type thing, which I, if I remember correctly, is a reshoot. But yeah, I forgot, like, this movie is, like, very poignant, kind of, in many ways. Of, like, the way it deals with, like, class and race issues. They don't put put it as race, but it very much is, like... Uh, it also... I, like, I mean, like, I'm not also gonna, like, pretend like I'm, like, someone who also knows a whole lot about Spanish history. But, like, I kind of feel like, also, they touch upon things that they... I, I, don't, I don't know, wouldn't do in a new remake of Zorro. Like, I mean, oh. the, idea, the idea that, like, the two ideas is a modern-day or an apocalypse tale on Zorro, which neither, I assume, would deal with, like, the actual Mexican heritage and history and, like, w- like the main purpose of Zorro as a character. Yeah, because he's not just fighting for, like, the people. He's fighting for, like, they're mostly, like, if you look, like, they're, like, the natives. I, I don't like, uh, I guess the term would be like, they're the indigenous people. Because if you remember Raphael's speech, it's like, oh, the Spanish did this and the Mexicans did this. And I, I don't know who he's necessarily referring to as the Mexicans. Also, I don't know if you could light a fuse like that with a gun, but it's still fucking awesome. But like, this is fucking brutal. This like shot, it's so well done. Like conceptually to do this, and like you said, John, I don't think they would do anything like this in modern day, which is sad. That guy was a little slow to get on his horse. I also do, like, as a, like, big set piece, you have a ticker, you have a timer on the clock with the fuse. So he has to do all this action, you have the gold being taken away, and the fuse going to kill all of the, the workers. It's, like, a ton of moving parts, but they're doing a very good job of showing you everything. I feel like this movie also uh, makes me think that, like, oh, this is what Jonah Hex should have been in some ways. Yep. <laughs> right? It's like, oh, like, you awesome. you could do a... You, I feel like you can still do a Western in modern day. And we'll talk about it a lot next week when we watch Lone Ranger. It's like, there's just a way to do it, and they just aren't doing it. Like, they just... It's almost like a weird where, like... um you either live in a world where you have like your True Grits remake, your Bone Tomahawks, or you have like your Jonah Hex, your Lone Ranger. Is that the only reason you can do? Well, yeah, they're it's soft. Like, they're, they're very soft, and they don't Lone touch Hex. the political and the racial stuff. Where this is doing everything. Well, well, well what I'm trying to get is is like though, like to make a big budget major Hollywood Western it seems like nowadays it has to have like a gimmick. Like Cowboys and Aliens. It's got aliens in it. You know? Oh god, I Lone forgot Ranger. that it existed. Oh. Lone Ranger. It's like it's also like a that movie. It's a giant dev vehicle. Uh like Wild Wild West is a giant fucking spider. 
you know, it can't just. Uh, it's be also like, it's a Will it's a Will Smith plus a giant spider. And I think as as weird as it is, like I think Wild Wild West could work. It just because of who's who did that movie is why it doesn't work. I mean, I, I think like Wild Wild West is like cancerous in its bones. Like I don't think there's anything that could. The best um, thing about that movie is the song, and the song has nothing to do with the movie. Well, I mean, like, doing, like, a Western two-hander, I think, works. Like, I think you could do it. Nothing about that movie works. Yeah. I, I, that's what I mean. Like, conceptually, it's, again, it's, like, this. There's, like, a lots of, like, weird gadgets, and, like, like the, their gadgets are not, they're built into the scenery. I, I do also Cowboys. think. Are we gonna have to watch Cowboys and Aliens at some point? No, no, uh, no. I'm not watching. I also want to say this. I, I've never is, seen that movie. I never want to see that movie. This movie, or I mean, this duel right now with the music is it has Spanish music, but it's very samurai. Like with the oh, way that they're playing it. I was gonna say Clint Eastwood. Well, and Clint Eastwood would be them stealing like from Kurosawa. Yeah, but I think you're right. Like it's very. Like that seventies, sixties, seventies Western, which is a direct rip of like fifties Kurosawa, which would be another thing I would love to do. Which would be to watch like it's, you know Jimbo kind of and <laughs> Fistful of Dollars. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. Like it's kind of like also like unfortunate that we've had we've we've seen at this point that Catherine Zeta Jones is like a really good star fighter in her in her own right. And it's like a shame that she's like not like a third party oh. of this fight. Like she yeah. fighting That's someone because else. There's no other women in this movie. Yeah. But like I themat like thematically and story wise, there is no one like her battle is against like her what she was raised with. Because it's like he's fighting the guy who killed his brother. And De La Vega's fighting the man who killed his wife and stole his daughter. There's nothing... There's Sadly, there's nothing built into the script for Zeta Jones to do, but to, like, kind of face what's happening around her. But she's also not a damsel in distress, which I think is... As of right now, is, like, a plus for a movie at this time period. I miss, like, old-school explosions and action movies. But, like, I love that we have, like, these dueling fights. Oh, hey, there she is. Wow. Oh, what, what a turn. Dad. What a good dad. <laughs> I'm sorry. What a pecker would. <laughs> there it is. Thank you. All right, someone has to write that in the chat so I can add it to the. Uh... What a peckerwood was it? Yeah, or just the word peckerwood. I got you. But like, I like as much as I was saying, she's not damsel in distress. I don't even think that counts. She gets more to do in the sequel. It's like the one good thing about the sequel. Yeah. That was a very Batman move. <laughs> I just... Maybe it's like some weird, but like... As goofy as the concept of sword fighting and like fencing, it's so gorgeous on screen. Yes. Like when done right... Oh, here. Looks- now you have something for her to do. Does she save all the people? And just leaves her father... I forgot about that. Like, that actually makes sense of, like, having her be the kind of young... I do want you guys to let me know when you remember how he gets it. I do not. Yeah, it's really awesome. the, the fire, the fire the sounds like a jaguar. <laughs> yes, the, I'm glad you you recognized it too, John. It was that was totally jaguar fire. <laughs> that has to also be added to the <laughs> jaguar fire. Oh, relit the fuse. 
This is like very Temple of Doom to me, like with the people in the background. I feel like that was like also a very 90s theme where like there was like explosions or huge things of fire and it'd be like a lion or something. Yeah. Well, because they like fire doesn't have a sound. I guess like it has like a crackling, but like it has like a a, a whoosh. (laughs) Yeah, but it's not thematic. This is also a cool them fighting around real horses is also like a fucking cool stunt. Yeah. Fuck, that was hardcore. That was to hard. say. Hey, that rope chaining came into handy. Thank God. Oh, really? I'm guessing that was Siler cracking one open. Yeah. Sorry. No, it's fine. It's just funny. I've been. Li- <laughs> I've had a couple too. Oh. Ooh. Now I kind of remember this. That's not the part I remember. And I maybe I'm misremembering. He already knew it, though. But yeah, also, but like, Matt Lesher is really good as a villain in this movie. Matt Lesher is good as a villain, period. He's good. If it doesn't happen, maybe I'm thinking of another movie. What I thought happens. Oh, this is... I remember this part now. This is such good, like... Thematic death. Like, the kind of slowly... Ooh. Oh. Okay, so I remembered this death very wrong. <laughs> yes, I think you All right, did. So what I remembered, I, where I thought I remembered, was that he gets two swords in his eyes. And I don't know what movie I am thinking of that someone gets... Oh, because we just watched fucking Green Hornet, and that's what happens to him at the end. I feel like that happens in another movie. Hey, can you quit like doing like sex eyes and like let us out already? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, you can fuck later. Come on. I realized you're horny, but please, we're gonna die. Also, it probably would take less time if you just like stop the fuses. But then it wouldn't look as cool. Yeah. That is a big yeah, real explosion. <laughs> they Jack really Mark made that go boom. God bless. I'm guessing fire. that's a miniature with like a bunch of hey Jaguar sounds. Yeah! <laughs> but, like, that looked awesome. Because, like, oh, yeah, a lot of that falling would look CGI, but, like, I like that stuff. That looked fucking cool. So, when it comes up, I'm going to tell you guys what I learned was reshoots. Ooh, this is very mummy sound. Like Prince of Egypt coming out of the desert. Yeah, man, they they kind of don't make like I, man, I don't want to sound fucking old, but you know, <laughs> they don't but make like, these big like adventure movies anymore. Kind of. It's like, you know, it's like we talked about like Pirates 1, The Mummy, uh, you know, this yeah. movie. And, and I think they, these are like really kind of like they're like they're not like in a unique mold because they are in a mold that has like been shaped by like previous kind of pulp films. But specifically, like these three films are like so good, but like you don't really see like these kind of films like you know even like five years later. It's like the you have sequels or you have things that with these actors or these directors, but it's like it's definitely like not the same. No. no, and they try, and we're gonna watch like two of the ones that they try, like, like uh, Lone Ranger, Ranger is them trying, and I think John Carter of Mars, which we'll get to, is also an attempt at that. I just don't know if like they know how to market them.
Do you want to have sex near my dad's corpse? Uh. Oh, did that did that bullet do a number on him? Okay, so I will explain to you. So in the, oh, I heard about this, yeah. This is the original ending, where it just kind of where it ends kind of like here. The next, when we get to it, the next thing is the reshoots because of uh, what do you call it? test audiences not liking it, the ending. Like, all this stuff is all uh, reshoots. Oh, I couldn't imagine the movie ending with, like, the death of, uh, of him and, and they just go to black. Yeah, that was the original ending was, yeah. Uh, oh, I feel like that's, like, very not in the spirit of the rest of this film. What? This kid, ten years later, becomes a dick to his dad. Yeah, because the whole thing was like people were like, "Oh, we don't like that." Like Catherine Zeta Jones's character ends with her dad dying in her arms, like, and that's the end of the movie. Yeah, so can't they, you like, can't you like give her like a a baby to take care of or something? Well, it's it's it's. I do I, like I, that I, it's I, mirroring I, the beginning of the story. Him telling. Oh no! Yeah, it's thematically like it makes sense. Yes. It's also just like Antonio Banderas is like 30, so he can actually move around and shit. He's being like a dorky goofball. But even with this added on stuff, this movie is like as long as it is, it doesn't feel it at all. It's so oh. fucking tight. Like story wise, it's so tight. It's like, oh, even though they had a baby, it's still super sexy. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, it's actually like kind of like this. This is definitely like the most. I feel like they had such good chemistry. Maybe it's just. Could you imagine if Raul Julia was still alive, like during this? And that last, like, big old fight scene with Raul Julia versus, like, what's his face? I feel like it would have been interesting because Raul Julia wasn't a small man, but like um, yeah, Andy man. Hopkins is tiny. I was gonna say he's M Bison. Oh yeah, and like the Batman Forever thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, that's hype. Man, that movie ruled. That oh, movie. Man. Next up is Step Dogs. Oh, you got that too, because. Uh, <laughs> Oh, what's what's Step Dog? Uh, no, I don't want to watch it. It's our next movie. That's what it is. What good movies? <laughs> Does Step Dogs have Antonio Banderas in it too? Is that why uh, it's been- I hope so. I might watch it. <laughs> Jesus. This has nothing to do with anyone. What the fuck? I feel like. I, I haven't seen the sequel in so long, and it's so disappointing to remember that it's bad. Because this movie is fucking fantastic. I'm actually, I'm looking at the IMDb score, and I am offended at it. What is it? 6.7 out of 10. Oh, that is wrong. That is- I feel like, uh, if, for the if I could give this a score, this is like a 9 to me. Oh, this is I a 10 watch to this me. This any is a day of the 10. week. This yeah, is a I give it a 9. I'm going to go yeah. perfect 10. Man, and this is easily my number one. Yeah. Like, everything about oh, this yeah. one. Like, I feel like, like I, I listened to some podcasts, like, oh, what would you cut from this movie? I don't know if I would cut anything from this movie. And it's over two hours. It's two hours and 15 minutes. And it's like, I don't think there's any fat. Like, we get a really cool, like, five minute training montage. I feel like everything pays off. There is not, like, one thing that doesn't pay off in this plot. Like, the thing with the baby and with the reshoots playing up at the end, like everything being like a mirror between them, like it works so fucking well. 
Yeah, this is my number one. This is like one this of my favorite. One. This is one of my favorite movies of all time. This is, I think, just a perfect action movie. It is fun. It has charm. It has comedy, adventure. It's just got everything you need in a just a perfect movie for me. So yeah, I love the shit out of this movie, and this is easily my number one. Uh, you know, it's really funny because we're talking about how the sequel is like not remembered as good. And I was like, well, okay, so like, well, what's the big difference? Um, because it's the same director, but the the big difference. Who um, wrote it? Yeah, so the writing team is Roberto O.C. The fuck? Oh, my my TV went out for a second. Is Roberta O.C. and Alex Kurtzman. Uh, you would remember Roberta O.C. as the writer mm. of the 20, uh, 2009 Watchmen, Star Trek, Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, Cowboys and Aliens, uh, Star Trek Into Darkness, The Amazing Spider-Man 2, uh, Star Trek Beyond, the 2017 Mummy he executive produced, Ooh, and directed. Uh, no, he directed. Oh, did he direct? Oh, no, that was mummy? Kurtzman. That was Kurtzman. That was Kurtzman. Was so I'm looking say, like he's he's written some cool things. Like he wrote for Alias. He wrote, uh, but then it's like he wrote The Island, which is goofy. I like Transformers is good. Star Trek is good. Revenge Transformers, of the Fall- Revenge of the Fallen is not good. Not good. Cowboys and Aliens is not good. Not good. Star Trek Into Darkness is awful. Yes. So bad. Uh, uh, he wrote for Fringe. He wrote uh, uncredited writer for Star Trek Beyond, and then he uh, wrote for Sleepy Hollow and Hawaii Five O. Uh, amazing. He also wrote. He writ, uh Him and Kurtzman wrote Amazing Spider-Man Two, which is debatably the worst Spider-Man movie. Uh, it's not debatable. It is the worst Spider-Man movie. I have never seen it, and I have no interest in ever seeing it. It's got good cinematography. It's bad. And, like, like, you know, here's the thing. Like, we, like, Spider-Man 3 is bad, but, like, time is, like, kind of, like, it's like Batman Robin. I rewatched it last year, because last year was when Far From Home came out, right? Yes. Yes. So we rewatched all three Spider-Man for the... That feels like a lifetime ago, but yes. Yeah, for like the podcast, and Spider-Man 3 is not bad. It just needs the entire Venom plot cut from the movie, and then it's a good movie. Like, the Venom plot drags that whole fucking movie down. I, I mean, the I mean, I, I will admit that the Parker dancing down the, down the street is good. Uh, it's better in retrospect, because it's definitely and- like... In retrospect, it's like, oh, this is being played for comedy, and like, when I was a kid watching it, I was like, this is fucking ridiculous. And, 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 and Harry Osborne eating pie is great. So good. Uh, yeah, it's a comedy. Like everything, everybody's playing a 10. It's just like the whole Topher Grace Venom thing is so bad. Like uh, it's so unnecessary. But to basically kind of get back to the point is that, you know, I, I, for, I forget like the writers that we brought up, like, you know, for the original uh, Zora film. You know, completely are like not here for it, and then the the team that we have for the Legend of Zorro basically are like the duo, like writing team for like most of like the big budget action films of like the next like decade. You know, it's like your Watchmen's, your Transformers, your Star Treks, your Spider Mans, and it's like woof, it's like these people. Okay, so I will look also, the also, first. Ro- Roberto Osi, looking at his Wikipedia, he is a supporter of 9-11 Truth Movement. So fuck that guy. Sorry. Like, holy shit. Um, I'm trying to look here. So the writers for this movie are Ted they... Elliott and Terry Rosso, who you guys know. Uh, yes, I was trying to look and see what they like did recently. So Terry Rosa did Shrek, Moon Ranger, which we're watching next, Pirates of the Caribbean, the newer Aladdin, which I've heard good things about. No, he did the uh, old Aladdin. Oh, he did the 92. Oh, shit. So he wrote the better one. 
He wrote The Better Aladdin. He came up with a story for Godzilla. He wrote Small Soldiers. He wrote The Road to El Dorado. Oh, shit. He wrote National Treasure oh, Book of Secrets? Road to El Dorado is so good. And he also did uncredited right on National Treasure 1. Which, by oh, the way, like, like, yeah. I was actually going to say that there's, like, a lot of, like, like, a lot of, like, Antonio Banderas in this movie, like, reminds me a lot of, like, El Dorado. Of the he El Dorado, also, like, two main characters. He also wrote next week's movie, The Lone Ranger. Him oh, and hell yeah. His, him and his partner, Terry Rossio. Yeah, and I would say, like, I am a infinite defender of national the National Treasure movies. I want a third one. I want five more. Because um, they're, like, I feel like they're really the modern-day Indiana Jones. Yes. Like, it's the same movie. Um, yeah, like, I don't, like, I, it's, I feel like this, it's kind of weird that they didn't get back the original team. I wonder if there was some hijinks, but it is kind of cool to like. And they I think it's also why busy with the pirates movies, so that's yeah. Possible. Like yeah, it, honestly could, it, it honestly could have just been them working on pirates, and then that became like I, like to be fair, like Pirates of the Caribbean is a way bigger money oh, making billions than, of dollars. Yeah, and and so it was like one of those things where it's like okay, like well, do we go back to doing the legend of Zorro, like, you know, uh, like eight years later, or do we do like Pirates of the Caribbean, like right afterwards for a bigger payday? I guess I'm surprised that like, they didn't go back to Zorro quicker. Like, I guess everybody was too big to like, come back immediately. I I mean, like that's what happened. Um, I mean, it's also, you know, we we talked about it at the beginning, but like, or like I brought it up in the beginning. I'm like Amblin, like Amblin is like know, a, Spielberg is a production company I haven't seen like too much of, and then you know TriStar is a division of Sony Pictures now, but yeah, TriStar's dead pretty much, right? It's it's like a division that Sony uses like sometimes, but. Uh, like looking at now, Tristar was re- relaunched in 2004 as a marketing acquisition unit, had a particular emphasis on genre films. So, like, it seems like Sony was like, you know, basically trying to, you know, rebrand Tristar and like, how do we rebrand Tristar as a genre films thing? Well, oh. well, well, we have like this big success we had like, you know, a couple of years ago in Zorro. They put up bunch of big movies on their TriStar recently because of like Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, uh, Baby Driver, All the Money in the World. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff and a bunch of bad stuff too. Um, I don't know. Uh, it is ex- interesting and exciting. Like I think that's why like Lone Ranger as a next up, although it's, I did not realize it's a two and a half hour movie um, for the next yep. movie. Yep, the London Ranger is fucking long. Um, but it's the same writing team. It's another Western. It's a modern Western. It's only seven years old. So I think it works really well. It's but, directed by Gore Verbinski, who's like no slouch. Like I like my favorite film from Gore Verbinski is Rango, which is also like another great Western movie. True. I'm excited, but that is next week. It is also almost one in the morning on the East Coast. I am fading quickly. All right, we should Bye. we should wrap up then. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, do we want to do plugs then? Anybody? I guess if we're wrapping up. Yeah, sure. Uh, follow me at uh, Question Connor on Twitter, at Maybe Connor on Instagram, and support your local hockey game. Okay. Uh, uh, you can find me also on the bad website at. John J O H N underscore F N underscore Siler S E I L E R, uh, where I uh, tweet out like stuff that we're doing for work, uh, stuff things uh, things that are happening in my hometown, and uh, things that are happening in the future. Cool. You can follow me on Twitter, uh, J M Scott one nine three, and you know follow the other shows. Uh, I know the guys just put out an episode talking about DC fandom, just like we did. Um, go send all your B stars pictures to Young underscore Tommy. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I'm getting that joke right. Yes, and that is correct. Thank you. 
I figured I'd keep that joke going. And yeah, we'll catch you guys on the flip side. Yep. Adios, everybody. See I love you. I love you. I love you. I'm going to talk underneath everybody, and I love you still.